Hello. Okay. The Marvels, the sequel to the 2019 movie Captain Marvel and the 33rd movie within the MCU. In this film, Carol Danvers gets her powers entangled with those of Kamala Khan and Monica Rambo, forcing them to work together to save the universe. So right from the start with this movie, it instantly has this very fast, hectic, high energy to it that's running throughout this film and it was entertaining it was fun for sure you know this film is constantly entertaining you but that energy that's created felt very artificial what i what i mean by this is the energy and the pacing of the movie felt forced by the very choppy editing to create something that i felt was very easily consumable you know, the experience of this film, the experience of the Marvels is somewhat fun. It, it was entertaining and even the humour in places actually worked for me and actually made me chuckle. And that's saying something when it comes to the humour within the MCU because if you've been following me for a while now, you know I'm not a massive fan of the humour within these films. But there are moments that I just thought was, yeah, it was actually quite funny in places. But... The overall experience just ended up feeling really messy and it just felt like a product that needed to be easily consumed by the viewers so they would watch it over and over again and so that you know they could rake in the cash. Unfortunately, that's how it just felt for me. It felt very empty and very very soulless. For me personally, this movie felt like a good example of a studio needing or wanting to make money. I don't really know the details of what went on behind the scenes in regards to reshoots or anything like that, but I do sense there may have been a more coherent story and depth to certain characters and their journeys somewhere deep buried beneath this very kind of fast, high energy mess that we do get. The overall experience was just very messy, but again, sort of like that, 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 that high energy that I felt this film has, it just felt so artificial, like you could sense it, you could feel like this film had been cut to bits. And even though it holds together, as you know, it just, it barely holds together, there is that sense of there being something else buried beneath all of that mess. The CGI was okay in part, but there are moments with the CGI that really made me cringe because it was so bad. There is this moment in the mid credit scene. I'm not going to I'm not going to give away what it is because this is a spoiler free review, but the CGI in part was really bad and a lot of it felt to me it just looked photoshopped. Like they just sort of cropped all these images and put them on top of other sort of images and backgrounds. It's just the CGI was just, was not the greatest. Like it was okay, it kind of, you know, it was serviceable, but it all, it kind of felt very TV-like. Like this overall film really felt like it should have been on Disney Plus and the CGI also felt like that. But yeah, it had this very kind of Photoshop look to it. The villain is without a doubt one of the weakest villains within the MCU and it's frustrating because I felt like we could have had a very good solid villain here. Like I like the motivations but what really let the villain down as well as a lot of sort of these you know a lot of the characters throughout this film and their relationships and their journeys what let it down for me was the writing. And again, just going back to how this film, how the story was put together through the editing and its pacing is what really f sort of let this villain down, I felt. Because I could see, like, I, I was intrigued by this, vil this villain's motivations. But it was just how it all came together and just the writing, which I felt was incredibly weak, is what really let these characters down for me. And I just felt like the villain's role within the story, just the way it was executed within the story, just felt very kind of tacked on. Like a, almost like a last minute thought, like, oh, we need a villain here um, and we'll just give us somewhat depth so people can somewhat care for her. But you don't really end up caring for this villain's journey anyway, just because of the way this character is written. And just the overall experience, you know, this film as a whole, even though it's fun in 
part just ended up having this real tired feel to it you know you've heard and read it before when a certain franchise gets tired and for me this is the movie that does it when it comes to the marvel cinematic universe it didn't feel like a, a return to form as a, some people have shouted out about um you know yes a lot of people have really liked and enjoyed this movie a hell of a lot more than i have but for me personally this feat this entire film just felt very tired yes it's fun but it, it just felt artificial it just felt like a very tired product and they're just trying to squeeze every last pence every last pound out of it unfortunately that's how it just ended up feeling for me you know there are signs of a good movie within all of this mess i felt like i could see glimmers of it i i think this is a classic example of i think someone compared this on twitter to josh whedon's justice league and i can see why because under all uh, under all of that mess you could kind of see nia de costa who directed this film her kind of true vision maybe of what it was she wanted to do with these characters and this story and but unfortunately it was sacrificed for this kind of very high energy experience that would be easy you know easily consumed by the masses so people would go and see it again and again that's just how it came across to me unfortunately but there are glimmers there are signs you know particularly when it comes to the villain and just certain moments you can kind of see there is another movie maybe but like i said i don't know the details of what's going on behind the scenes in regards to reshoots and that. i'm just speculating but that's just how the experience felt for me so one of the big surprises for me was brie larson actually managing to give a worse performance than she gave in her debut in her debut movie that introduced the character of captain marvel her performance in this film was very very weak for me she just didn't look like she was having fun the performance felt forced and unnatural like she didn't really care and it all just felt very empty i wasn't a fan of her in the first movie and i feel you it looked like as, as if she had just checked out her performance lacked energy and that which is quite funny because this entire film was built on this kind of very high energy pacing when it comes to how it's put crafted and put together with the story so you know to have her performance then which i thought was very weak just you could just kind of see like you could see brie larson is not really given anything when it comes to her performance she doesn't look like she wants to be there that's how it looked to me personally and there were moments that made me cringe because it looked like she was forcing certain emotional expressions in certain scenes um yeah brie larson like she was one of the biggest negatives for me when it came to the 2019 movie and you surprisingly she managed to give her an even worse performance that just made me cringe and she's the main character you know this is one of the main characters of the story that you really want to care about and you want to follow and it just it just felt silly it just it just did not work for me Brie Larson as this character is just not working for me but it's not all negative when it comes to the performances because one of the standouts for me and definitely without a doubt one of the strongest performances was was from the very young actress Ayman Valani apologies if I've pronounced that incorrectly she plays Miss Marvel or Kamala Khan and I really liked her in the TV show and I think she's great you you buy into this character you buy into the fact that she's this 16 year old fangirl of the Avengers and she's clearly putting a lot into her performance I just love this energy that she sort of injects into the character it's it's over the top but it also just feels real as well and she has this energy and charisma i mean the charisma that this this actress has that she injects into this character is just it's, i really like it and it's the writing for me that kind of really highlights the unevenness in the movie's tone with certain characters discussions and interactions and even the humor like overall tonally it kind of just it just holds together and that's due to the pacing and the editing but there are hints of something maybe a little bit darker and perhaps a little bit edgier buried beneath it all maybe that's just me i don't know but that's just me going back to those glimmers of there being potentially another movie under this and you know there are signs of this being 
or it could have been a deeper experience. Uh, it, it's there somewhere, buried beneath all of the mess. And that kind of just leads me into the overall look of the film. There is no distinct style to how this film has been crafted and put together. And I feel like, you know, it definitely has that Marvel formula to it. But I feel like Marvel has never felt more like a product than it has now up until this point when it when it comes to this film. I'm not familiar with Nia De Costa, the director, who's I'm not familiar with her style of directing because I haven't seen any of her previous movies. I know she did the most recent Candyman, but I've never watched it. But there is no distinct style. It has a very bland and dull look to it that feels very classic Marvel, but very much a product. You know, this is a film that feels like a product and it wants you to pay for it again and again. It's a cheeseburger at McDonald's. That's what this was for me and it's definitely without a doubt one of the weakest entries in all of the MCU. But unfortunately for me, this is not one of those products that I want to go back to over and over again. I have no desire to really rush out and run to see this film again. Yes, it is fun, it's easy to consume, it's entertaining, but there's nothing much more to it. It's a mess and I really struggle to see the point behind why we got this film other than it perhaps being another bridge to a bigger piece of the puzzle that we are leading to with these Avenger style, you know, these Avenger event movies. This is how this film felt to me more than ever. Like, I actually quite enjoyed Ant-Man Quantumania. And, you know, one of my sort of gripes with that movie was, yeah, it did feel just like another stepping stone to those big event Avengers movies to just move that bigger sort of story, that bigger narrative along. But I still really enjoyed that film a hell of a lot more than I did with the Marvels. Like, I even thought, I didn't even really think there was much chemistry between our three main characters, you know, with Captain Marvel, Kamala Khan's Miss Marvel, and you've got Rambo as well. I just, there could have been something deeper here and meaningful. Um, but unfortunately, I just wasn't getting it. There's signs of it, there are hints of it, but unfortunately, it just didn't come together for me. And so, yeah. They are my thoughts on the latest entry within the Marvel Cinematic Universe and I will be giving the Marvels a 4 out of 10. So yeah, they are my thoughts on the Marvels, but what did you guys think? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you agree or disagree with anything I've said? Then please let me know in the comments below and let's get a discussion going. And if you've made it this far into the video, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. And if you want to see future reviews from just some random Welsh geek ramble on about film and TV, then please, why not hit the subscribe button? It will mean an awful lot to me. And yeah, thanks for watching. Really do appreciate it. And I'll be seeing you guys soon. <laughs>